Good morning and welcome to our service on this first Sunday in Advent, a time when we give significant thought to our Lord's return and our preparedness for that event. Our call to worship. O oh, people of God, let us draw near to God. O oh, people who sometimes do not listen, let us listen to God's name and be renewed by the name above all names, the name of our Maker, who made us and shapes us to be vessels of light in waiting times. Come, let us worship. Let us worship the name above all names. Amen. And because this is the first Sunday in Advent, we light our first candle. And this is for hope for all God's people. We light this candle for all God's people, struggling to be bearers of hope in a troubled world. God, as we wait for your promise, give light, give hope. And we sing together the hymn from Singing the Faith 174, Light a candle in a darkened place, verses 1 and 2. Thanksgiving, the Advent hope. Father, we thank you for the hope with which you have filled our lives. We give thanks that in the coming of Christ, you have given us assurance of sovereign control of all things. We praise you for this Advent Sunday, when we remember the coming of Christ to be the Saviour of the world. Thank you for the promise of his coming again as Lord of all. We are grateful for the hope with which Christ fills our lives. In our times of doubt and despair, the message of his coming, his birth, life, death and resurrection, renews our hope. Thank you that because of Christ's coming and the promise of his coming again, we can live each day in the knowledge that ultimately you hold all things, including ourselves, in your love and care. Lord, come and come again. Come into our lives that we might have hope. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now we hear our reading from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name know, known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past and no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. 
because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have, we have all become like one who's unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are a potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we're all your people. If there are any potters amongst you, you will know that if you have some fresh wet clay, you can make something useful from it. However, if you leave the clay uncovered on a surface for any length of time, the clay will dry up and go hard, making it very difficult to mould into what you want it to be. Well, that reminds me of what was happening to God's people during the time of the prophet Isaiah. In our Bible reading, Isaiah is very upset. He's begging God to come down and change the hearts of his people. Why? Because they've sinned and they've turned away from God. They don't call on God's name anymore or plead for his mercy. They just do their own thing and God had become very angry with them and turned away. It all sounded pretty hopeless, but Isaiah didn't think so. He knew if the people turned back to God, he would be able to mould them and shape them into what he wanted them to be. Isaiah said to God, O oh Lord, you're our father, we're the clay and you're the potter. You formed each one of us by your hand. Please don't be angry with us. Even though our hearts are hard, you can still mould us in what you want us to be. And you know, even today, just like people in Isaiah's day, we sometimes wander away from God and our hearts have become hard. But rest assured, all is not hopeless. If we turn back to God and ask him to forgive us, he will mould us and shape us into what he wants us to be. Because never forget, God is still the potter and we are still the clay. Amen. And let's bring before God our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, we've turned our face from you, whose face is always turned towards us. We have forsaken what we know is just, we have ignored what we understand is true. We've refused to believe what should be believed. We have deceived ourselves in word and deed. For this we humbly repent and turn our faces towards you, the one who waits for us and makes us ever new. Make us ever new now, O restoring God. Amen. And we join together in our hymn from Singing the Faith 491. A servant's work in an estate, whose owner is away, and whose return they shall await, though no one knows the day.
Verses 24 to 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. The lesson of the fig tree. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The necessity for watchfulness. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Listening to people on the TV, you would think that Christmas was cancelled this year because of restrictions placed on them by the government who are trying to stop the spread of coronavirus and in a bid not to overwhelm the NHS. But perhaps for the first time in a very long time, people might just begin to realise what Christmas is all about. Why, there's even a hint for them in the beginning of the title. However, for those of us who know and love Christ as our Saviour, this Advent season, with its restrictions in place, is giving us the opportunity to truly grasp 
what the second coming of Christ means and to see how our preparations for the end times are coming along. Usually by the beginning of Advent, the countdown to Christmas has begun. Even in the church, the headless chicken race takes over with preparations to decorate the church, organise carol services, think about the lunch club dinner, singing in old folks home and a myriad of other seasonal festive activities. And yes, we might attend a Bible study, but if we're totally honest with ourselves, delving into God's world, word is the last thing on our mind. It's just another thing to squeeze into an already busy schedule. Cards to be written, presents to be bought and wrapped, food to be baked, and the list goes on, it's never ending. We're on a run, never taking time to stop. The merry-go-round just keeps on going. But not this year. This year is different. We've been forced to stop by something we can't see or control. So I want to draw your attention to Mark chapter 13, verse 31, which says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Even in these dark times, we know where our hope lies, in Christ and in his word. God and his word provide the only stability in this unstable world. We've got to turn away from the temporary world and the need to accumulate possessions and instead turn to the Bible and its truths. So how are we going to do that, you might be asking? Well, think about preparation. I know, like me, we've all been on holiday and more often than not, we are usually prepared. I mean, we've booked where we're going to stay, booked the flight, organised the clothes we want, got our um, money. We've done everything that there should be. We've thought about the right clothes and we might even have got a book, a travel book, that tells us about the place we're visiting. We're prepared. Same as when there's a wedding in the family. It doesn't just happen, does it? There's a venue, the photographer, the disc jockey, the florist, the registrar of the church, and many other things all have to be booked before you even start to think of invitations, food and clothes, etc. Nowadays, you know, many of us even prepare for our death by pre-praying for a funeral service, choosing our own hymns and readings. My friend is writing a letter to each of her children and grandchildren, which they're to read when she dies. In everyday life, as the Boy Scouts motto says, we are prepared. Yet can we say the same when it comes to the second coming of our Lord? It, it's tricky, isn't it, preparing for something when you don't know the date or time? Due to the pandemic, planning for a wedding or a baptism is very difficult these days because lockdown rules keep changing. But as Christians preparing for our Lord's return, well, it should be second nature because come what may, we know it will happen. So back to God's word, the Bible. Can I suggest that you study it, digest it, and more importantly, live by its instruction every single moment of your life. Jesus in his words in Mark 13 verse 33 actually tells us how to prepare for his second coming. We have to be alert and be on our guard. But be on our guard against what, you might ask. For most of the year, we haven't been able to worship together in the church building. But God's work hasn't stopped, has it? There have been services online, phone calls, letters, emails to other of God's people, all keeping in touch 
with one another. The building, in all honesty, is by the by, because God's people are the church. And you know, sometimes we put too much stock in bricks and mortar and forget what our mission is. Just think about it for a moment. We can speak about Jesus and his saving grace in any place and in any situation. So Jesus asks us to hold firm to the truth and that means checking to see that those who lead us are God-centred, not self-centred, are scripture-based and spirit-led. How many times have we heard people proclaim the end of time is nigh? Rubbish. They don't know when it will happen. They're just guessing. Don't listen to them. Our role is to speak the gospel message, which I know isn't easy in a world where many people ignore God. But we should always remember that God is with us and he will guide us. You and I, we live by faith. And for us, that means not knowing the whole story. But verse 27 gives us such hope. Because at the end times, God is going to gather up his elect and take us to be with him. So my plea to you this Advent season is, watch and endure. Remember, we aren't part of a world of quick fi spiritual fixes or flashy, impressive messiahs. Our role is just to be on guard and last out. There's no escapism here. Each day we have to take up our cross and follow our Lord and Master's example. Let's always remember that when we die to all, that he died. We shall live to all because he rose. Everything that happens to us is projected on the screen of eternity. We are becoming what eternally we shall be. We are called to live now in the light of then. Now that's exciting. Amen. Today, for our prayers of intercession, we'll use a printed labyrinth image as a way of demonstrating that it's worthwhile persevering and waiting. Imagine the light in the centre, and by tracing the labyrinth with a finger, you can see how we keep moving in and out from the centre of prayer, with the labyrinth helping us to keep hope and to keep persevering as we wait for our Lord's return. Let us pray. We pray for the world, asking God to change hearts and minds so that many will see the light of Christ. We pray for our country, its government, and the people that in the darkness of the pandemic, they will see the light of Christ. We pray for those who find themselves in darkness due to illness, loneliness, stress, unemployment, financial difficulties, or worry asking that they may see the light of Christ. We pray for ourselves that the light of Christ may shine out from us into the darkness. Ask the Lord for guidance as you continue to watch, pray, hope and persevere until his return. Amen. And we say together the words that Jesus taught his disciples. We say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Amen. We join together in the singing of the hymn 185 from Singing the Faith. Sing we the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Kingdom of Christ, for thy coming we pray. Hasten, O Father, the dawn of the day. When this new song your creation shall sing, Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. service draws to a close our benediction we have been called in to be renewed in the name of the one who is love even in the darkest night even where there is only one small candle lit your power and love restore us let your light shine on us this day so that we may be warmed and strengthened to light your light all around Amen. And we share together the singing of hymn number 780 from Singing the Faith. Stay with me, remain here with me, watch and pray, watch and pray. Amen.